Hi, you are now at part two of module three, the burden of eye disease. This section is called the health status of Australians. Let's begin by exploring the health status of people in Australia by looking at life expectancy. The life expectancy of Australians is ranked third in the world for both males and females. Males live to 79 years on average and females live to 83.7 years. This is very closely behind Japan, Iceland and France. Life expectancy at birth has risen quite significantly over the past 100 years, especially since the 1970s. And in fact, Australia compares very well in terms of its ranking for life expectancy, mortality, risk and protection, self-rated health and morbidity among members of the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development, or OECD. So here's some good news to start with. Deaths as a result of things like cancer, heart disease and stroke have decreased. And so has death from emphysema and cigarette smoking related disease. And obviously that's because um, there's been a quite a big campaign to reduce the incidence of cigarette smoking related disease over the past 20 or 30 years. However, the most dramatic decline in death rates from infectious diseases has been observed since the 1920s. And this is directly attributed to improved sanitation, better living conditions, proper nutrition, and also, most importantly, vaccination. So apart from a small increase in death rates from hepatitis, septicemia and AIDS in the 1990s, the rates of infectious disease is very low and contributes to only about 1% of all deaths in Australia. This, as compared to the 1920s, was 15% of deaths as a result of, um, of infectious diseases. So quite a dramatic shift down. Unfortunately, it's not all good news and diseases leading to morbidity and mortality, which are on the increase, include diabetes, especially the incidence of type 1 diabetes, kidney disease, dementia, interestingly chlamydia, and also being overweight and obese, especially those aged 55 to 74 years. This information, as with the previous slide, comes from the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare publication called Australia's Health 2010. Duckett and Wilcox in Chapter 2 state that health is influenced by several factors, which include family environment, social and economic status, the physical environment someone lives in, and also genetics. Now, both the Duckett and Wilcox textbook and the Australia's Health Report from 2010 indicate that health status is unevenly distributed and Chapter 5 of the Australia's Health publication states that disadvantage takes its toll and disadvantage is risky. That is, disadvantage takes its toll on health and is risky to health. And we'll explore that a little bit more later. Your first task now is to read two references. Firstly, the summary of Chapter 2 of the Australian Population and Its Health in Duckett and Wilcox. This is page 17 and 18. And then Chapter 5 of the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare, Australia's Health uh, reference. So please access those and then answer the following two questions. One, consider the groups found in the Australian community. A. Which members of the Australian community are reported to be less healthy? And B. For each group you have listed, in one or two sentences, explain why this may be the case. And question two. Which members of the community enjoy better health than the average population? And what are the possible reasons? Now that you've considered the Australian community and who is more likely to be healthy and who is less likely to be healthy, that brings us to task two. Now, health has traditionally been described as the absence of disease or disability. However, Duckett and Wilcox suggest that it 
this definition actually ignores other issues such as social well-being and that a person can still have a disease but not actually be classified as ill if that disease is pre-symptomatic. So in light of that, your second task is to consider the following things. One, what is the difference between the new and the old World Health Organization system for classifying health? Why do you think the new version has been adopted? And why are death rate statistics used to measure health? And finally, question four, life expectancy in the 1950s and 60s stagnated, but improved dramatically in the 1970s. Suggest some reasons why. The chapter, um, chapter two summary in Duckett and Wilcox will help you to answer these questions. And finally, for this section, task three involves linking the leading causes of death with eye disease, which is more relevant to you. This table here has been adapted from Duckett and Wilcox on page 25 and shows the leading causes of death in Australia in 2007. What I would like you to do is consider each of the general health conditions causing death in the Australian population. And then in the column of, on the right, uh, briefly, briefly describe how or if each of these conditions has a relationship with eye disease in any way. An example has been provided for you in the diabetes column. So if you have a look on the um, very left-hand side, you'll see diabetes is listed there. The total number of deaths is 3,810. And then the possible relationship with ocular disease is where you actually need to write why, why you think that that problem causes eye disease and, and in what way. But some of these conditions may not have a, 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 an eye disease correlate. So in with regards to diabetes, obviously it does. And so, as it says there, presents in various ways as diabetic retinopathy related to duration of diabetes and blood glucose control. So just one sentence to describe that popular relation, uh, possible relationship with ocular disease. Now that we've considered life expectancy, the diseases that are most likely to kill us and those that are on the decline, um, we're going to move on to the epidemiology of vision impairment. So the task three that you just completed has now got you thinking about ocular disease.